Hey, Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. Today, we talk about price hikes in, Wi in Wizards of the Coast new Magic the Gathering set and print run reductions. What does it mean? Do they have a, a uh, correlation to each other? Well, let's talk about it. Before we get started, though, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Comments help feed the YouTube algorithm. We get to a thousand subscribers. We're gonna have a sweet giveaway for those who wanna for those who watch the videos on a regular. And don't forget to link in description for lots of good ways to support the channel. Everything from Patreon to buying stuff on uh, TCG and eBay. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, as we talk about Ixalan and the Lost Caverns, <clears throat> one thing I want to talk about is what we know is. From what we've heard, there has been a print run reduction, and what some people haven't realized is there has been a price increase coming with Lost Caverns of Ixalan. And it's like I mentioned before in some of the previous settings, I said, you know, they could they could reduce the print run and raise the price on certain products uh, to get the same amount of money. They must have been watching my videos because that's exactly what they're doing. Um, which if they watch their videos, you think their company be ran a little better. But anyway, point being, um, I got a little news here. I want to show you some price comparisons, how things are going and how we know that this is happening. So we know they've done a print run cut for Dr. Who we've also heard and had it, uh, from what I understand, there's also a print run cut for Ixalan and the print run cut may not be for draft boosters, whatever, and they can still do reprints. But the first wave will be shorter than normal, um, and so will the collector boxes because Amazon dumps and what have you is really destroying the market value of the cards, therefore making people not want to buy them. So if we want to see what that price impact looks like, let's look at this. So right now on Amazon, you can see a little prime symbol, mm, Amazon. Um, here are the prices for the entire set of Wilds of Other Rain, a set that just came out. Set box is going for 120 105 for draft and 199 for collectors. Actually, the collector box is at a real good price. I think that's actually probably close to underpriced. Um, personal opinion, but anyway. So this is the older set. So the next set that's coming out, which is Lost Caverns, has this price set: 136 for set boosters. That's a $16 increase. 131 for draft boosters. That is a $26 increase and $244 for collectors, which is um, a $44 increase compared to the previous prices we see. But let's be honest here. Because Eldrain's already been out, the price has been dipping. Uh, so the prices that we see on Amazon is the new price of what they're trying to get them to sell for, which is not the actual listing price to begin with. So... What we want to focus on is what were the original prices of these cards in retrospect to what the prices of these are. Well, let's take a look at that. Let's remember 136, 131, 244. So if we look at Wilds of Eldraine when it first came out, this is TCG player. You see this right here? Um, I, I didn't get I couldn't get a picture of it with it at this mark right here. This came out for set boosters 125, right? That was the original listing price on TCG which is normally higher than the Amazon price, if you guys have been watching my channel, uh, every time I compare it. So the cheapest you could have got it probably would have been 120 which is what it still is. But let's just say it is 125 all right? But as you can see, it's already went down here on TCG to around the 115 range, which is close to 120 where it's at now. If you continue and you look at the draft boosters, they also started out that what that one too is also 125 now down to 100. So, if both the set and draft are 125 at release for those two products, $15 or uh, $11 increase, $6 increase. So the print run has been reduced, the price has went up to uh, make sure that the reduced in stock does not affect how much money they actually make from what they're selling. And I think this is something we're probably going to see in the future with the next couple sets as well. As they keep reducing the print run, the price is going to go up 
but I don't think they're really going to tell us that. Now, if they come out and, and they're honest with us, I can respect that. If they come out and they said, hey, we're going to reduce the print run, uh, but to keep sales up, we're going to tack on a few extra dollars to the product, I think people would be okay with that. I know I would just to get them to stop printing this stuff into the dirt. Now, that price increase needs to be in this $5 range. It needs to calm it down. This $244, though, it, that's a bit pricey. That's a bit much. Um, I didn't really look at the collector boosters, but uh, one thing we should also keep in mind, too, is they're putting box toppers back into Lost Caverns. Now, we probably should have expected this uh, with the whole Jurassic Park theme going on. So, uh, will that make up for the extra price increase? Well, who really knows? But we will be getting box toppers in the new product when it comes out. So that'll be kind of cool to see. And what really makes me interesting about the box toppers is will the box toppers in draft and set be different from box toppers in collector? Because remember, uh, collector has that neon ink stuff. Now, that's probably going to only be in packs, but it would be cool if the neon ink was also something you could get inside a um, box topper at a slim chance as well, just because... A little extra is a little extra. It would really be cool, but we'll have to wait and see. But at least we will get box toppers for all the Jurassic World stuff, which will be cool all in itself. And it's going to be nice. I hope those box toppers are foil. Um, in a way, I kind of don't because they'll probably be bent to all hell. But either way, should be really cool, and it'll be nice to see that. Also with that, we also talked about recently, um, you know, we talked about here, 136, or I'm sorry, 131 for draft. This is the one we're going to look at, right? 244 for collectors. If you compare these two prices here to Ravnica Remastered, which is coming out, this is all for a remastered set. $4 more, $6 more. This is the correct way to price a remaster set because, listen, I like remaster set just as much as the other. But it doesn't matter how much cool stuff they put into a remastered set. It really loses its flavor when you start putting stuff in the remastered set that's not really from the area. Like, for example, if there's Force of Will in this, yeah, that's great. But does it really belong in here? We've had a lot of remastered sets where some of the cards that were in there were just because they were money reprints. Not because they actually mattered to the set. And I'd like to see them get back to a better remastered version. Um... We haven't seen any of the cards come out with this yet, but in the long run, it's going to be interesting to see how they price this stuff. And again, it's very interesting to see that they have priced the remastered set only a couple of dollars more for draft and collectors than an actual base set that is getting ready to release in November. Is that not crazy? Is this the actual turning of the tide? We've talked about so many bad things that Wizards of Hasbro has done. Is this finally them, without publicly announcing it, announcing it, saying they're sorry and doing things the way they're supposed to? You know, maybe it is. Maybe it's just to trick us. We'll have to wait and see. But at the end of the day, this is an improvement. But also, if they would just come out and admit that they've made mistakes, they've done things wrong... And here's how we're going to fix it and kind of highlight some of the things I've talked about and even other people uh, who have ideas about stuff like this. It would really go a long way in how uh, the, the Magic player base and the collectors and the players feel toward the company and ease a lot of pain and suffering they have about whether or not they're just going to get shafted if they buy cards and try to play versus just playing a different game. I mean, we've already got... Troll and Toad and who knows who else along with other card shops around the world that have closed because Magic has stiffed them so hard that they cannot make money off their product. The only people making money off their product is Magic. And they may think that's okay, but when there's not a game shop to play the game at and nobody can only and people can only get their product from their store, they're going to find out real quick that that community that was supporting them up is no longer there. And that's when they're really going to have to take a hit in the wallet and fix it if they don't start fixing it now. So tell me what you think down below. Am I right? Am I off? Am I wrong? 
hard to say, but let's hope at least some of what I said is correct. So comments down below. Tell me what you think about the new prices, cut, cuts and print runs, what they're doing. So at the end of the day, thanks a lot for listening, guys. Till next time, be kind. And as always, I hope to see you across from the game table.